Hello everyone. Imagine that instead of Mercury, Venus, Earth and Mars, all the largest moons of the planets are located in the inner part of the solar system. Ganymede, Titan, Europa, Io, Triton and others. What would happen if we placed all of them between the orbits of Mercury and Mars? Will they collide, change orbits or be able to exist in equilibrium? We'll find out using the Universe Sandbox Simulator as an example. Let's go! To start with, this idea was often suggested to me by my subscribers in the comments. Actually, it's a pretty good idea, so why not do it? And to begin, I'll remove all the inner planets of the solar system. That means Mercury, Venus, Earth and even Mars. Now, I'm going to place as many as 19 of the largest moons from all the planets in the solar system here. And to decide in what order to arrange them, I'll use a randomizer and generate the arrangement order with it. So, I've opened the randomizer so you can see the whole process. Here, I've listed all the major moons except for the moon. The moon will be placed at approximately the same orbit as it currently has in the solar system. I wrote the names in three languages so that many of my viewers can understand which moon is which. So I run the randomizer, and here is the result I got. And the first will be Neptune's moon Proteus, and the last will be Saturn's moon Rhea. Now I will place all these moons according to the generated result and arrange them at equal distances from each other in terms of their orbits. Everything is set up. The distance between the moons in their orbits is 0.07 astronomical units everywhere. And here is the moon's orbit. As you can see, it's a bit whiter here. I'm showing it to you with the mouse pointer. It is located at a distance of 1.03 astronomical units from the sun. So that's just a bit farther than Earth's orbit. And by looking at the moon's orbit, you can roughly understand how far the other moons are located. I'll tell you that the first moon, Proteus, is located on Mercury's orbit. The last moon, Rhea, is on Mars' orbit. Then roughly, Ansavat is on Venus's orbit. So guys, all these moons are spaced equally from each other, starting from Mercury's orbit and ending with Mars' orbit. In the simulator, one month is currently passing per second. Let's take a look at the stability of the orbits. I won't risk speeding it up any further, so the simulation processes everything as accurately as possible. At this moment, as we can see, the orbits are quite stable and smooth. Everything is on circular orbits, just as I set it up. There is no influence for now. Well guys, all these moons have a rather small mass, so it's possible they won't be able to exist like this and all rotate together in such orbits. But you can also take a look at the habitable zone, where we have the red zones of the object and where we have the green zones of the object. So that's how it turned out. And now let's let a few decades pass and see what the result will be. Time has passed. The temperature, as I checked, has stabilized on all these moons. And most importantly guys, the orbits of these moons haven't shifted at all over time. Well, that's how it is in this simulator at least. But how would it be in real life? Share your opinion about this in the comments. Now, let's start reviewing all these moons. Let's start with Proteus, the closest to the sun. This is what Proteus looks like. In the simulator, it's shown as a perfectly round object, but in reality, it's closer to a square shape. It's quite bright, and it's obvious why, because it's the closest moon to the sun, located in Mercury's orbit. Also, Proteus is the second largest moon of Neptune, with an average temperature of 156 degrees Celsius. And in case you are interested, I'll mention that we've managed to fit as many as 19 different moons here, starting with the first in Mercury's orbit and ending with the last in Mars's orbit. Now let's look at the second moon from the Sun, Europa. Oh, what is this Europa with a dense atmosphere? Europa is a moon of Jupiter. Its average temperature is 147 degrees Celsius. I'll hide the atmosphere and clouds. Oh well, here the equator is completely dry. There's no liquid water here at all. Let's take a look at the pole. At the pole, this is what we have. There's a little bit of liquid water here and even a bit of ice. As I understand it, this is the very last ice left on Europa and it's slowly evaporating. And we can see that the minimum temperature is still rising even now. So the last remaining ice on Europa is really evaporating. We see the same thing in the southern hemisphere of this moon. If you look with the atmosphere and clouds turned on, you can see that at the pole, the surface is slightly visible. That's exactly where the ice is. The atmosphere on Europa has completely formed from water vapor and is now 8 Earth atmospheres thick. And the pressure on this moon is as high as over 17 atmospheres. And there's even a slight chance of life here. Just over 1%. Next we have Jupiter's moon Callisto. And look, it's as if it's losing its atmosphere. 
This is pretty much how it looks from all sides. That's definitely interesting, yeah. The average temperature here is 414 degrees Celsius. Oh, this is like a second Venus, guys, it reminds me of that. Everywhere, the temperature is high. There's absolutely no chance of life here. The atmosphere is made up of dioxide, more than two Earth atmospheres. It's mostly carbon dioxide at about one and a half times Earth's atmospheric pressure. And the surface pressure is three and a half atmospheres. I'm hiding the atmospheric clouds, and let's see what's on the surface. Here, it's just a barren surface, and as we can see, there's nothing at the poles either. Basically, everything has escaped into the atmosphere and is even slowly being lost because Callisto doesn't have a magnetic field, and the solar wind is gradually doing its job. Plus, the high temperature also contributes. Next up is Iapetus, a moon of Saturn. It behaves in principle as usual. I don't really see any changes here, but its average temperature is as high as 65 degrees Celsius. And basically, the temperature is up to 100 degrees everywhere. No atmosphere has formed on this moon, and in general, the situation here is clear. Now, the moon Tethys, which is also a moon of Saturn. It looks like this, and you can't see any atmosphere on it. Its average temperature is minus 17 degrees Celsius. Here, yeah, all the temperature values are already negative everywhere. And I can confirm for you that there is no atmosphere on this moon. Next is Saturn's moon Enceladus. This is how it looks here in this system. Again, we don't see anything special on the surface. It looks as if it has melted a bit, because you can't see its icy coverings. Its average temperature is minus 55 degrees Celsius. And here, it's cold everywhere as well. We can also see that there is a mention of a thin atmosphere of water vapor, but it is very tenuous, and the probability of life is absent. If we take a closer look at this moon, this is how it appears on the dark side. At the poles, we also don't really see anything special. Here in the southern hemisphere, there are some areas that look kind of greenish. Interesting. Now Miranda, which is a moon of Uranus, looks like this, very bright and striking. Its average temperature is about 6 degrees Celsius, and even the other indicators, the maximum and minimum temperatures, are quite at acceptable levels. So, not bad in terms of temperature, but guys, there is no atmosphere here. Therefore, if there's no atmosphere, we won't find anything else interesting here. Now you see Oberon, which is the second largest moon of Uranus. Its average temperature is 3 degrees Celsius. And unfortunately, there is no atmosphere on this moon either. And finally, guys, something a bit more interesting. Here we have Triton. Triton is the largest moon of Neptune. We see a dense atmosphere. But its average temperature is minus 107 degrees Celsius. And it's very cold everywhere. The temperature is fairly even across the entire surface of this planet. There is hardly any life here. There is a little carbon dioxide and water vapor in the atmosphere, but mostly nitrogen prevails here. That's just over four Earth atmospheres. And there's methane present at about 0.41 of Earth's atmosphere. The surface pressure is almost eight atmospheres. Now I'll remove the atmosphere and clouds and let's see what's on the surface. Well, we see a frozen surface, basically everywhere across the whole planet. Especially at the poles, there, everything will be frozen. Well, it's pretty clear overall. So that's Triton, guys. Now the moon. The moon looks as usual, because it's almost in its native orbit. The average temperature on the moon is minus 8.5 degrees Celsius. And everywhere here, the temperature is below zero. There's no atmosphere on the moon, not even in this simulation, so let's move on. Now you see Titan. It actually looks really interesting now. This is the largest moon of Saturn. Its average temperature is minus 98 degrees Celsius, and the minimum temperature is minus 72 degrees Celsius. So it's actually quite hot here on Titan. Its atmosphere contains a little bit of argon. There's water vapor. There's a huge amount of it here. 250 Earth atmospheres. There's nitrogen at 2.32 times Earth's atmosphere. And there's methane at about 0.1 of Earth's atmosphere. The surface pressure with such an atmosphere on Titan is 3.5 atmospheres. And the probability of life on Titan is currently the highest among all the moons we've looked at, almost 4%. Now I'm opening up the atmosphere, the clouds. Oh wow, look at how much water we have here. That's really something. So will there be life here or not? Well, we've seen a very low probability of life, so it's unlikely we'll find it anywhere. But all we see are continents and flooded areas with a dense atmosphere. Yes. Well then, the dense atmosphere holds all this water, even though it seems there was not anywhere on Titan with temperatures above 100 degrees. But such a hot planet is lifeless, unfortunately. Next, Uranus's moon Umbriel is rotating. This is what this moon looks like. Its average temperature is minus 31 degrees Celsius. 
and everywhere the temperature is below zero. It doesn't have an atmosphere so here we can only see this kind of varied surface and nothing more. Next is Saturn's moon Dione. This is how it looks. It also seems like there's no atmosphere here. Yes, that's right, there is no atmosphere here at all. The average surface temperature is minus 78 degrees Celsius. Next is Mimas. This is also a moon of Saturn. It also has no atmosphere. The average temperature is minus 68 degrees Celsius. And now the most interesting moon. This is Ganymede. It is the largest moon of Jupiter and the entire solar system. Take a look at its appearance. Here, there's already something interesting. We can see an atmosphere, we can see clouds. Here the clouds are moving across the planet. The average temperature is 12 degrees Celsius minus 18 degrees at the poles and 16.5 degrees Celsius at the equator. We see an atmosphere made up of water vapor and there's quite a lot of it, over 13 times that of Earth's atmosphere. But the surface pressure is quite low, only about 10% of one atmosphere. And the habitability is almost 3%. Now I'll hide the atmosphere and clouds, and let's take a closer look at the surface of Ganymede. In fact, it's unlikely that we'll find life anywhere here. There are places where the water has completely melted, but ice still predominates here. Although the temperature is quite normal there, perhaps not everything has had time to melt yet, even though a considerable amount of time has passed. While we see islands, we see this kind of landscape on Ganymede. It's quite a cold world, with lots of glaciers, icebergs and all that. And here's something interesting written here. The simulator says this is a planet orbiting the sun. So the simulator has already designated this object as a full-fledged planet. Well, why not? And I'll add that it's quite cold on Ganymede, so all this ice can't melt that quickly. Although I fast-forwarded quite a bit of time, and the temperature has already stabilized. Now the largest moon of Uranus, Titania. This is how it looks. Unfortunately, there's no atmosphere here at all. And well, everything is clear with the surface. The average temperature there is almost minus 60 degrees Celsius. And it's very cold everywhere here. Next in line is the following moon, Ariel. This is also a moon of Uranus. And we can see that there's no atmosphere. The average temperature is minus 74 degrees Celsius. Now, the most geologically active moon in the solar system, Io. Here it is on your screens. This is a moon of Jupiter. This is how it looks here. Its average temperature is minus 94 degrees Celsius and it's very cold everywhere. It hasn't gotten any warmer here. And you could say Io is already in Mars orbit. There's no chance of life on it, but it does have a very thin atmosphere made of sulfur dioxide. And the surface pressure is extremely low. The atmospheric mass here is actually even less than what you would find on Mars. Now let's take a much closer look at this fascinating moon from all sides. Here are some particularly interesting brown areas. There's really nothing special to see at the poles. There are even actually some red areas here on Io. Visually, this moon looks beautiful. Not like the previous ones, which were kind of grey. There's definitely something to see here. And the last moon in our simulation, which orbits at the edge of Mars orbit. This is Saturn's moon Rhea. This is how it looks. We can see that it has no atmosphere. And its average temperature has settled at minus 101 degrees Celsius. That's the result of this experiment. I think it turned out quite interesting and engaging. If you enjoyed it, please support this video with a like and leave a comment about what you thought of this idea. And if I made any mistakes in the video, feel free to correct me. Thank you very much for watching and see you again in the universe.